going to want to get a little bit of solder and tin the wire, uh, leg that we just pulled from the motherboard. You don't want to leave the soldering iron there too long because you could fry the chip. So once you've got the wire tinned and you've got the leg tinned, you can put the wire onto the leg. I'm going to make this as neat as possible so I'm trying to do it with my opposite hands. And now the light's just gone off. Great. I'm going to make this as neat as possible like I say. So it would help if you got a bit of solder on your iron first. Do it. There we go, right. Once that's on there, we now need to find a five volt and a ground point on the board. So you want to make sure that's securely on, which it is. Um, you can leave the tape on, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to take it off for now. Because we need to find the ground point and the 5 volt point. Okay, so our uh, 5 volt point is going to be right here. You need to look closely where that is. Um, it's just behind controller port 2. Um, so if I zoom out a little bit so you can see where it is. Just there. It's got the letters E M and then 25 perpendicular to it. So that's what we're going to use for our 5 volt point. So we need to get another bit of wire, tin it, and then solder it onto there. <clears throat> Probably about the same length of wire will do. I always forget to get some solder off. Why do I do that? Now that point's got a bit of solder on it now, so we should be fine to stick the wire on. So, like I say, tin the wire. And then I'm going to put it to this point. Okay, that's that on there, that's the 5 volt wire. We now need to find a ground, so I'm going to find that now. And I think, I think, just give me a minute, but I think that one of the legs of this, um, where's my little screwdriver? <laughs> the legs of this capacitor, one of them should, should be good to do a ground to, so let's do that. I think, yeah, that's probably going to be the best option. Yeah. We just want to make sure we don't fry the capacitor while we're at it. So that would not be good. Okay, after soldering it all on, I've soldered it all to the wire also. Uh, to the switch, sorry. So, yeah. I'll show you the wiring scheme for that in a sec. But, um, rather than using the leg of the capacitor like I was going to, which is this capacitor reel, I used the underside because it was a lot easier because the leg of the capacitor is tiny. So, if I show you where that is on the underside, so if flip it over and the controller ports are at the front, you want to look for exactly where this pin is. It is, you get this like row of 12, and then it's just this one up from it. And then I always remember how it's this one because it's the one that's got its own like little trail going up to it, and then above it, there's three pins as well. So hopefully you can find that pin. So like I say, there's the two controller ports right there. Follow it up. And it's that pin right there. The one on its own. So you want to just solder a wire to that. So that now we'll have a look at how the switch is wired. If we have a look at the switch, we've got this very closest pin is the one that comes from the underside, which is the ground wire. The middle wire is the one 
from the leg of the chip. So closest one is ground, middle one is leg of chip, furthest one is the 5 volt one that we did, the, the one that's near the capacitor but isn't the leg of the capacitor. So the second one that we did is the furthest away. Middle is the chip and the closest to us is the underside. Once you've got this all wired up you want to install it in your case and then try it out. I've got the console all screwed back up, all the cases done, I've installed the switch on the side, I just dremeled a hole at the side uh, and I super glued the switch to the inside, it's not advised. I would say screw it in but I like the aesthetics of it being glued in from the inside so that's what I always do. Um, I know that if I put it to the front of the console, the way I've oriented the switch, it's going to be 50 hertz at the front and 60 hertz if I go to the back. So I'm going to be using Wonder Boy for this. So if I put it to 50 hertz, and if you note the music and the size of everything on screen, it'll help with the comparison. So. Note the speed of the music. And note the big black borders. This is 50 hertz. Now it's always advised to switch off your console like I'm going to before you change the frequency using the switch because if you haven't got a break before make switch then you can short something in your console and damage something so it's always advised to turn off your console before switching frequencies but mine is a break before make switch so I can show you that in a sec but now if we go to 60 hertz note the size of the Sega logo has changed to a bit fatter and remember to note the speed of the music and then the big black borders have now changed to tiny little borders so we fill a lot more of the screen so yeah um, I've got a break before make switch so I can show you right listen to the music So you can clearly see the difference there between 50 and 60 hertz on a Sega Master System 2 game. Um, I hope you've liked this tutorial, I hope it's helped you. Uh, rate and comment on this video, subscribe to me if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to check out more tutorials and more modding stuff, head on over to my channel at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Killer. And thanks for watching, good luck.